Bro, <laughs> that man woke up, yeah, and saw the stocks drop and they said, hey, yo. What did we do? Like, Logitech Who? is the most like, they don't do anything. Did someone release a sex tape or something? Or what happened? <laughs> that is crazy. Okay. We're touring the fucking Titanic. Yeah. The, one that, the one that got himself destroyed. I hear it. I hear it. What? Wait, wait, wait. We're going to go and tour something that got destroyed. No, but imagine you found nah, something. Nah, 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 nah. No, but imagine you found something. I'm not meant to find it. You hey, look, to... I don't give a fuck who got a snitch on or who he did or didn't snitch on. Music is music at the end of the day. I don't really care. I don't, he didn't snitch on me. Nah, he didn't snitch on my gonna family. Get, it's going to get to a point like he, bro, three years where it's like... He didn't snitch on my family here. Mm. He didn't snitch on my family. All right, 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 all right. Yo, my people, welcome back to another episode of the Out Podcast. I'm your host, Jay, to the Izzo, and I'm joined by... Mids MB. What are you guys saying, man? Hey, here, man. <laughs> weird. Huh? <laughs> I said weird. Yeah, we're here. Yeah, we are here. Thank God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I was going to make a joke. Let me, let Don't me. make a joke. <laughs> let me Because all those, all those memes were unnecessary, bro. Yeah, we were talking about this off back, but yeah, might as well get straight into it. I wasn't even trying to laugh because I was like, like, at the end of the day, people died to get. Yeah. But, but when someone posted um, Drip or Drown, <laughs> <by> <laughs> You know when he has the little umbrella <laughs> daughter? I was like, yeah, yeah, you people are taking the absolute bit. Piss, bro. What the hell? And I can't lie, like, a lot of these things, when they post, like, memes about it, usually I'm like, I'll laugh at one or two and then I'll be like, okay, let me get serious. Yeah. Then someone's died. Then. But this one... Bro, man's... I did the massive man. I was like... <laughs> someone said, yeah, bro, we've lost whole planes before. And how do you think we're going to find one little ibuprofen in the ocean? <laughs> Imagine, I, bro. No, because they oh, went below. My goodness. So for context of people who don't know and who've been off the internet for a week. <laughs> <laughs> like two weeks. Like, yeah. Because this is all I've been seeing. Um, recently, a submarine, sub, they, they call it something else. The Ocean Gate submarine or something. Yeah, whatever. that's the company, but um, they call it a submerge or something like that. Yeah, because it's not big enough to be a submarine. Yeah, bro. it's like a mini submarine. But yeah. Um, yeah, it went on a voyage to visit the ruins of the Titanic. To something that's a, pretty to do a common. Tour. To do a tour of it, yeah. yeah. And that's something that's pretty common. Like James Cameron, the um, director for the Titanic film. Yeah, he Leonardo did that. Capra. He's done it like 33 times, apparently. Even the guy who was leading this one did it 24 times. Yeah, because that was his company. Yeah. So, yeah. So, it's a common thing, but this time it, did it went end wrong. Well. It went, I, no, but... You see that company? Mm. Whoever is the chief of design mm. or whatever, who was ever, whoever was on that design team knows damn well that thing was not fit for purpose, bro. Let me get a Bro, man said it was controlled by, by a Logitech controller. I don't, do you know the Logitech stock? <laughs> bro, of course. <laughs> and what? then was like, Logitech, what a straight. Because what did Logitech <laughs> do, bro? Bro, exactly. Them man, them man, you guys are bro, bro. them man woke up, yeah, and saw the stocks drop and they said, hey, yo. What did we do? Like, Logitech who? is the most like, they don't do anything. Did someone release a sex tape or something? Or what happened? <laughs> that is crazy. Like, so... I think below 800 feet, I saw was, um, below 800 feet, after that, it gets dark, pretty much. Yeah, really and you dark. you can't see anything. Mm -mm. And also, the pressure, it just gets worse from there. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure is getting worse. What's the pressure is getting worse, sir? No, but oh, that's how you no, Because yeah. they went to a point where even, like, Navy, um, Navy submarines don't go. No, but, do you know what it is? I don't, I don't think it's that. I think it's because of the size of the vehicle, bro. No, but it did, regardless, like, even if it was bigger, they would have still been gone. Oh, sir? Yeah. Okay, because you know what I know the whole, like, you see the whole, like, water stuff? Mm -hmm. Bro, I don't, I don't fuck with water. Yeah. You know this, I don't fuck with water, bro. Yeah. Because water is very deadly, bro. Yeah, I mean, we're perpetuating a stereotype right now. I, bro, I, don't, I don't give a, I am that stereotype, bro. And I can swim, but I refuse. I refuse to swim because water is dangerous, bro. I'm so not I trying to... they went below 3,000 feet. Trying to, trying to flip and swim and come back with one leg, bro. That's long. I think they were 13,000 feet deep. And uh, Titanic is what, 2.3 miles deep, right? Um, I think, yeah, I think, yeah, it's 2.3 miles image. deep, yeah. But I saw like a little graphic, basically, as soon as they dropped down to that level, the whole thing just, like the pressure just... Yeah, so Titanic is 13,000 feet deep and they were touring that. So obviously it has been done before, but after 3,000 feet, you can't see anything it's the twilight zone yeah but I, and that's I, not even good for like the like human beings like we need to be able to see it can start to disorient us and stuff but I, f I feel like it's because of the the submarine as in the way it was configured because yeah. bro people have done tours like that before yeah people that go on deep dives like actual submarines that are there mm. 
can survive in those deep waters you yeah. get but that little something <laughs> bro it didn't even bro it didn't it didn't even look right like yeah, when but, i first saw it i was like I, in my mind i was like is this the submarine that you guys are calling? Yeah, but I think they were trying to innovate. This little art project, bruv. Yeah, they nah. were trying to innovate, but it nah, was just horrible. The way it was wrong. cramped inside as well. They said 250 bands for that. Yeah, that. I think that's even crazy. So there was, what, five people on there? Bro, 250 bands. And my man said he's done it tw- 24 times. That's like 1.5. So does that... No, 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 How no, 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 many no, no, was no. there? Was it six or five people? There were five. In- I think it was five, but minus the driver or the go- oh, gaming okay. controller. Whatever he so it was four him. passengers. I think so. No, it was five passengers. Oh, five passengers. And then the driver. Damn. So that's 1.25 mil. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> so that's easy money. <laughs> that is easy money. Bro, I'm not going to lie to you. That's not even an experience. I don't think you even experienced the whole experience for that 250 bands. I mean, they did. No. At the cost of their life. What kind of experience is that? To be stuck in one little something. Yeah. Cramped for like, for yeah. hours. And apparently this Ocean Gate company as well there was another couple who wanted to do the same experience, mm. but they kept on delaying their thing. So apparently... They're what, delaying the boat? Delaying, like, the submarine uh, tour. So apparently they they were suing Ocean Gate as well for 125k. But I, I think the main problem with this whole thing is that they weren't prepared. Not prepared. They didn't... They weren't so, prepared. They didn't let the people know the risks of this new technology. Because, no, but do you know it is? Because Ross Kemp was supposed to be on it, but mm. he said no because of safety concerns. He yeah. said, bro... And you know Ross Kemp is, is a real brother? Mm. Like, he's... I know he saw that. He said, bro, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is this? You think I'm going to survive? Yeah. Can this one even float? <laughs> bro, nah, 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 nah. That... Yeah. Like, obviously, RIP to the people that lost their lives yeah. because, you know, at the end of the day, people still died. But... Come on now, Ocean Gates, what are we doing? Yeah. Like, what are we actually doing, bro? Yeah, gambling, man. <sighs> if we're gambling with people's lives. That's, nah, man, that's crazy. And do you know what it is, yeah? I think the Titanic, let's just leave it. Let's yeah, just I mean, leave Leonardo it. Leonardo DiCaprio. No, wait, yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was thinking of someone else, obviously. No, yeah. let, let's just... Yeah, he, he, did, he did well. He portrayed it. Yeah, exactly. Let, let's, let's leave it. That film. We all know what happened. We have the films. We have the books. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Documentaries just, there. Yeah. What more do you want to talk? What are you going to find that no one else found in the yeah, how many yeah, yeah. years? Like that, that Jack and Rose were doing <laughs> love story. What are you gonna find there, bro? That Jack didn't even make it. You it were... Jack didn't even make it. <laughs> yeah, that's even a one. That's even the original sliming story. Because yeah. I can't lie, the way you know the Kepi had portrayed it, they both could have survived on that little iceberg yeah. thing. But hey, just compromise. It's you know what I'm saying. That's what it's Hey, but women. Anyways, let me just say, yeah, fam. <laughs> there was no. There's no need. Mm. These these people that go into flipping Titanic, trying to find Black Beard's treasure, mm. Bermuda Triangle. Who asked you? So you wouldn't do it? I'm black. Why would I do that? Nah. Do you know what it is? If people would jump off a plane, I don't think this is that far off though. No, it's very far off. Nah, I don't Do you know why? Because I know the plane and I know where I'm landing. I know the gear and there's an instructor with me. Okay. We're touring the fucking (laughs) Titanic. The one that the one that got himself destroyed. I hear it. I hear it. Wait, 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 we're gonna go and tour something that got destroyed. No, but imagine you find nah, something. Nah, 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 nah. No, but imagine you find I'm not meant to find it. Imagine you go to a party and you're like, yeah, man, I saw I saw the jack down there, man. <laughs> how, you, <laughs> how do you know it's him? It could have been my man from Ocean Gate, bro. Yeah, but I can say it's him. Who's going to check me? Nah, man, nah. <laughs> Who's going to check me? Because you're going to have dog tags on saying it's Jack. You're crazy. Maybe he has like a little bracelet or something. Like that. Jack or something. <laughs> little bastard, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> I just named the group, man. Or, um, man said the Irish drip. I hear it. Yeah, like. Flipping off. Nah, man. I just don't think, like, and you know it is? I'm not even surprised that there are no black people on that. Because I don't know any rich black person that's going to pay 250 bands to go there and tour the flipping Titanic, bro. Mm, in one kinky little boat. Yeah, but... I can't even call it a submarine. It doesn't even meet the criteria to be a submarine, bro. Yeah, but a lot of the black, rich black billionaires were busy, innit? Of course. Jay-Z was at the fashion show. Michael Jordan was drafting players. Conveniently. <laughs> that's a convenient... <laughs> bro, I know that man got the call. They are like, uh, so, uh, Mr. Carter, would you like to come on a uh, submarine? He's like, hey man, you know, I'm at the Paris Fashion Show, or whatever, I, bro. I knew he was already finished with the show, mm. bro. If that was me, I'm not spending 200. I'm not doing that, bro. Yeah. But I guess you get bored sometimes. Also. If anything, I'll do a flipping 4D immersive thing of how the Titanic it's not the was. Same. I'm, why am I diving, bro? Yeah, but you know these guys, they're the risk takers. Do they even have swimming gear down there? Do they have oxygen tanks for when the oxygen ran out? These ones are doing that they were doing countdown on BBC for when the oxygen ran out. 
Like, yeah, like, 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 trans- like transfer survive. deadline day, bro. <laughs> yeah, that was wild. They won't have enough to survive for years, though. Huh? They'll just have enough to survive for a couple of days. They can't yeah, exactly. that much yeah. oxygen. Time. No, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, a couple more days, like, because in case something went wrong. Yeah, but... How could your if... only system be one gaming controller? Yeah, that, that was wild, though. That was wild. Bro, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry. How can we... Let's just, let's just get this straight here. Yeah. I, okay, I paid 250 bands to come into this submarine in mm. the Titanic. I walk in, hello, hello, John, hello, Jack. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so you're in the shop. Okay, so here's what's going on. And then, wait, hold on. <coughs> you're the driver. Yeah. Mm. With the flipping controller. Yeah. Where's the one to communicate to flipping land control? Mm. How do you even say made it on this controller? Is it that you're now button bashing through cheat codes? Nah, they probably have a radio in there. Nah, man. But, yeah. I'm not I'm not with it. I can't lie to you, bro. It, the legit, I understand why Ross Kemp denied, because I would have denied to you. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense on any level, bro. But I would do something like that, but not that deep. Not that deep into the ocean. Bro. I'm, I'm, even, I'm even cautious to do snorkeling, bro. So you would have gone like a little submarine adventure thing? What do you mean submarine adventure? Out to submarine adventure. Which kind of... Which kind of <laughs> wait, which kind of adventure? I don't know. It's like, adventure in what? Adventure in... Just to see the sea in it. What sea, fam? See a whale or two. What, a whale or two? Yeah. I'm not seeing no whales, bro. No, Sorry. Admit. See, stuff in the water, I don't know. Bro, even tiny snorkeling, like you even go, only go five, ten mm. meters. I'm even cautious about doing that because I'm thinking, what if one fish come and knew my leg? Yeah, that, that one's scary, but if I'm in a submarine, I'll be like, I'm all good, man. So you'd rather go 1,000 meters down instead of 10 meters down. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. Okay, cool. Fair enough. Can everyone just. No, no, you see no, those no, videos no, of no, sharks no. just coming out of the no, car? No, no, no. Do you, wait, do you see that video of the shark doing the pop? <laughs> Yeah, I'm <laughs> nah, I'm not, that, that's too much anxiety. I won't be, I, I won't be sitting bro, down. Bro, <laughs> I will drown instantly. Bro, what? What are you talking about? I'll start bleeding, bro. <laughs> I'm talking about <laughs> Are you dumb? That's it, bro. Relief. Bro, do you know what it is? Because the thing is, it's not even like it's on land where man can. Yeah. Bro, I'm going like that in the water. Yeah, bro, yeah, I'm finished. By the time, imagine they're going. <laughs> <laughs> With his 8,000 teeth. Like, bro, why are your further punches already? Your arms already gone. Like. Bro, I'm telling you, stuff in the water is scary, bro. Yeah. How can you have a fish that blows up? Yeah. How can you have a fish that's a light? Even octopus. Yeah. Octopus doesn't make sense. And the thing is, I don't know actually, don't know, I don't know what the plural is of octopus. That's why I'm just saying octopus. Because I'm not saying octopusy. I'm not saying octopi. I don't know where it is. Octopuses? It doesn't even sound right. Okay. Oh, let me even search it. But I'm, anyways. I feel like octopi is one. Octopi? Like. That even sounds mad. That sounds dumb, though. It sounds hella dumb, innit? Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> bro, I'll be sorry, I don't even know what it is. I don't know who it is. So, I was never even good with biology or whatever it was. Octopus. Or they're gonna say something like a like a like a gang. That's what you call it in the multiple. Well, a group of them or something. Yeah, because I know you call a group of fishes like a school, isn't it? Which group is that? But yeah, octopi is the plural for octopi. Octopi? Yeah. Okay, cool, fairs. Bro. <coughs> telling me, are you telling me those things? I should just. I, the thing is, I would love to have a conversation with God. Yeah. Mm. Like honestly, like a fa- like how you are sitting here. Yeah. Like I'd actually love to actually sit down with God and be like, God. So when you are making some mm. of these animals, mm. oh, <laughs> okay, obviously I know. Look, I'm not questioning anything that you've yeah, made, yeah, yeah. but um, this octopus. Mm. What? Yeah, like yeah. Ah, the creativity is there. Mm. We already know that. But what what purpose does it serve? There's certain animals that I'm like, I don't know what purpose they serve. Yeah. Rats, spiders, even the common ant. I don't know what it serves. That ant serves a purpose. You know, actually, ants to have their own colonies on the yeah. ground and they. They don't really bother nobody. They don't, yeah, they don't bother. But spiders. I don't, what purpose do spiders have? Spiders. Wait, yeah. actually, correction. What purpose do those Australian spiders have? Okay, yeah. Because those, <laughs> yeah. But those are like, I feel like they're just mutants. <laughs> Brother, I don't know what's in that Australia place. A like. kangaroo. No, a kangaroo's are cool. Right? No, no, no I'm, I'm just saying that. Like, no, I'm them. just saying like, God, I'd, like how did, not even how did you come up with these animals, mm. but what is, what is their plan? Yeah, but not everything has to be this super creating honey and all this stuff. Like, no, but so okay. Just, okay. Just let them exist, man. But what do rats do? They what don't do have to do something for us for them to be... Okay, starfish. The most pointless fish I've ever, ever even studied about. Listen, we wouldn't have Patrick without starfish, so let's put some respect to their news. <laughs> let's just say, half of Spongebob is just wasted, though. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, even that doesn't even make sense. A flipping sponge on the water. 
surviving. Like your beef with the creator SpongeBob. I know, no, no, but I'm just saying there's certain stuff, yeah, that I'm just like, ah, nah, God, I don't, obviously, I don't understand anything that you do because yeah. your own is different to my own. Yeah. But, ah, wow. Yeah. Rats, mice, mm. even the gecko. I like gecko. They want that run us up. Bob in the head. <laughs> like, 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 vibes, no, 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 they can't. But I'm just like, but what purpose do they serve? You know? They always have to serve. I know bees, they're the ones that populate trees and everything and yeah, plants. Yeah. Spiders, uh, to be honest with you, I think they get rid, of, get rid of the excess insects that are there. Yeah, like, obviously it's like an ecosystem, isn't it? Without one thing, there will be too much But what do of rats them. do? Uh, them yeah. niggas in the sewers, bruv. It's not that. even like you're drinking the sewage. Yeah, I don't know what they do. I don't know what they do, bro. But to be fair, we don't live in New York, so it's not that big of a problem for us. That's very true. We have like mice, but mice. Like, Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, but even pff, those mice, yeah. Mm. Brother, I heard one time, <laughs> never even say anything. <laughs> bro. Yeah, mice are traumatizing. Bro, stuff. you see living in, 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 the, in the blocks, bro. Yeah. Mice, that you, they'll greet you as soon as you come into your block. <laughs> Hello, sir. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll do that little look at you. And then exactly. Start so, like, so have, you, have you got anything? You didn't rub anyone today? Okay. <laughs> Let me go out to my old hands. <laughs> do you know what I mean? What? Just nah. Scurry away. Honestly, fam. But yeah, just to sort of go back onto that submarine thing, it was like, they need to be investigated for fraud or, oh, or conspiracy to, mur- to commit murder. I mean, now that we're in conspiracy town, um, someone said that he might have faked his death. Who? The like founder or leader or whatever. Why? The CEO. Why? Because he's not here anymore. But why would you fake why would he fake his death? No, but isn't it weird like why why is it I don't know. Why is he not here? Like why is he not alive? <laughs> like because how did you mess this up so bad? But boy drowned. With... No, but that's what people are saying that like, he's kind of like faked his death. Wow. Somehow. Oh so there's another submarine there that came and picked them up and I took them know. to Cuba. I don't know. That, that that was something I saw. Maybe it was, it was probably a joke. Like you know there's a <laughs> Someone said he was playing with Tupac or something. Him and Tupac. He must have him in Cuba. Him and Tupac said, no, nice. so what someone said was um, that they used this so Michael Jackson could flee from wherever he was and safely each <laughs> so the news wouldn't be able to capture it. I think you read too much Reddit. <laughs> no, I wasn't even Reddit. I just saw this on Twitter. That's even worse. You, no, you, fo- you follow the wrong people. It was a me. It was a me. It was a me. That's crazy. But yeah, uh, this whole thing is crazy. It's very crazy. But and you know what it is? I saw a post the other day <laughs> that people were reposting, and it was like, oh, um, what five or six billionaires go drowning on a submarine, and there's a whole multi-million rescue mission. You know, mm-hmm. the U.S. Coast Guard's getting involved, mm-hmm. but then 450 refugees. They were on a boat that drowned and no one says nothing. Yeah. And you know what it is, yeah? I feel like people just need to realise that. How can I say this without sounding rude? Not even rude, but like mm. without sounding cold hearted or whatever. But you just got to realise the way the world is, bro. Yeah. Like these are billionaires that are active, like decision makers and game changers yeah. in the world. And imagine you rescue a billionaire. Like obviously, I'm not gonna say that. Oh, like, like no one cares. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, no one does. No one really, honestly, no one really cares about immigrants like that. Let's yeah, be unless it's your here. job, too, type of thing. Exactly. Honestly, it's your job. No one really cares. The average person will probably won't care because do, or won't do anything to actually help. Type of thing. Yeah, but obviously, we'll Maybe care. Give to charity or something, but won't really like. Yeah, we might give to charity. We might raise an, um awareness. Might yeah, sign yeah. a couple petitions, but we and we will care because you know we're the average human. But when it comes to the billionaires and all the top yeah. percentile of the world bro these men aren't like the rest of us yeah. if they were like the rest of us they wouldn't be in such high, high of a privileged position mm. because they would also feel some sort of I guess I don't want to say innate human need to help. give back and help yeah. but essentially that's where it is do you, do you get so when people start realising that a lot of these billionaires and millionaires don't necessarily care about everyone else who isn't <coughs> them or everyone else who isn't in their class yeah you stop getting... That's why I didn't get annoyed. Because I, I heard about it, I was like, oh, obviously that's sad for both groups, but I'm not surprised. Mm. Like, I'm really not surprised. Yeah. Even that even that one that one boat um, that I think was on the English Channel, I think in like 2014 or something, mm-hmm. that they were fighting. The locals were fighting to put them back on the boat. Do you remember that? The English Channel. Like, they were, so the boat came mm. on... Eng- again, oh, 
So a boat landed on English shores, yeah? Yeah. And the locals were like shouting at them and... Oh, yeah. So you, you know it's like, it was not a hill, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah it was like, like a top, hill. Yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah. At, yeah, so I remember. So, yeah, I remember seeing like some MP saying, yeah, they need to go. That's what, that's what fueled a lot of the Brexit stuff yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But like, it's just like, bro, like, you just got to realise the way the world is. And unfortunately, the world isn't a, isn't a nice place, isn't it? And the world isn't a place where a lot of kind-hearted people that necessarily care about everyone and the general well-being of the world mm. or at the top or at the, in the positions to make, make actual world-changing, world-benefiting decisions. Yeah. Which you get. So once you clock that, it's just like... I don't know, but with the refugee thing, I do need to do a bit more research, but I don't know. I <clears> thought, <throat> I'm not going to say it's a slippery slope, but I feel like if your state is a bit too caring for refugees and you're struggling to maintain what you have already mm. it does get a bit to a point where it's like can we even afford 100 percent. like obviously like if you're if we're working we're gonna have to be contributing to helping mm. give them housing yeah. food all this stuff so it's a bit of a trick obviously the way sometimes the way parliament and um mp say it is a bit cold like it's very know. cold and it's very blunt but somewhat sometimes you have to make those decisions in terms of yeah, we like, can't actually. Have we struggle. Like, I get. I get that like, we can't. Cost of living, like. We can't. We can't house everyone. I yeah. fully hear that. But the only thing that I'm gonna say is like the way they go about. So there's a difference between saying we can't house everyone, yeah. and then we're not allowing immigrants or migrants mm. or refugees. There's a difference between saying okay, what we'll try and do is assess the people that are coming in. Yeah and figure out whether or not we can house them mm. or neighbouring countries within our own little unit mm. can house them and then tighten the borders. Mm. Do you get it? Yeah. Although it can be the same message, it's just it's just communica- communicate, communicated wrongly. Because yeah. a lot of it. times they don't send them back to their countries, do they? They try to send they them. They hold to them them. in like them little yeah, which, centres. Yeah, which can be bad, but yeah, sometimes they just send them to like a neighbouring country or something. Yeah. And you know it's just it's sad to be honest because mm. I can't I can't imagine how they feel in terms of as a refugee like you're leaving everything you know yeah. and the thing is when they get on those boats yeah. there's not even a certainty that you're gonna make your destination yeah because bear in mind they overpack those boats yeah that's why a lot of those ones like the one the other the other day or other week sunk. But a lot of them sink, and I, I can't lie to you. A lot of people will either fall off the boat mm. on on the journey, or even before the destination. Do you mm. get it? A lot of people get sick, yeah. and then when I can't lie to you, you got to make like crunch crunch um, decisions. Yeah. Whereas when my man's sick on the boat, and everyone else is fine, yeah. can't lie. My it's man, not like everyone could just stay on one side. My man has to get off the boat, bro. Yeah. Like and and that's you get it. It's tough decisions. Do you know what I mean? And then when you get here, mm. you don't even know what happens when you get here. Yeah. And you're just in a bide your time and then the people around you are looking at you like you're like even if you're like a doctor in your home country like Exactly. You say you know this country, you're not just gonna lie. And just even mad as well. People that are on those boats might even like lose some of their belongings. So yeah. lose some of their ID, lose yeah. some of their medicine or anything, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's very, very crazy. Like there's a lot that goes into it. It's not just a thing where it's like, oh, these people just came over here for a holiday or da 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 da. Yeah. Brother. So my that's... house got blown up, bro. Yeah. I lost my daughter, I lost my brother. I'm here for a better life. Yeah. I was a professional back there, but obviously the politics in my country fucked me over. And now I'm here because I've seen the UK I've on, on like TV, news, films, whatever it may be. And it seems like, yes, this is where I think I will be safe. Mm. Or safer, at least. Exactly. So it's, it's, a, it's a mad thing. I'm not going to lie to you, bro. It's yeah. a really mad thing. Very, very mad <clears throat> but um, to switch topics a bit. Yeah. Um... I wanted to think about the whole Saudis and the Premier League and... Yeah. Because I've, I've been finding this conversation interesting because at first, <laughs> <clears throat> when, obviously, when Ronaldo went, no one cared. When mm. Kante went, it was like, we hear it, the money's, the money's lucrative. When mm-hmm. Benzema went, we hear it. But we were nervous. <laughs> 26-year-old, <laughs> who could have went to Barca went. Yeah. It was like everyone started to wake up a bit. Especially for someone who's playing at Wolves at a high level, could pro- probably went to Spurs and started and been in the top six or Newcastle or whatever. So what were you... Well, you might even still be in Newcastle. But um, what have been your thoughts on the whole Saudi... You know, um, at first, I was like, damn. Them, yeah. <laughs> them sheets going ham, do you know yeah. what I mean? But um, 
Nah, now nah, I'm just like, I hear it. Yeah. I fully understand it because for a long period of time, you, like, Europe, and especially England, yeah. has been the pinnacle of football. If, we, if we're being real, mm. everybody wants, a lot of players want to come to the Premier League, a lot of players want to play in the Champions League, which you get. Yeah. And obviously the Champions League is only restricted to European clubs. So, even if they don't make it to the Prem, they might go to Italy or Spain or yeah. France and they know they're playing European football, they're playing in, in the biggest competition that essentially world football has to offer. Yeah. And I feel like there's nothing wrong with the Saudis with what they're doing, to be honest yeah. with you. Because I read, a, um, I think it was Darmish Seth from, uh, I, th- I think I even pronounced his name wrong, but um, from Sky. He broke it down, him and Carver Solico. And it was like, the main reason why the Saudis are, especially this season, mm. putting so much into their football and entertainment is because of the uncertainty around oil okay. and how long that's going to sustain them. Because obviously, <laughs> everybody knows that the Saudi kingdom is essentially built on oil money. Yeah. yeah? Which, you know what I mean? It is what it is. Yeah. And I feel like, so what he was saying and the article that um, he was relating to when I read it was essentially saying that they want to build a sustainable model and yeah. actually want to have more to offer in their countries. Because, and, um, because when they made a bid for the World Cup for 20, 2032. Mm. Um, Sorry. Um, yeah, when they made it, I think it was 2032 or 2028. Mm. Um, they So they eventually withdrew their bid because they felt like Portugal, Morocco and Spain had a stronger bid for it. Mm. And that's because of obviously their country and what they have to offer. Because a lot of these, a lot of things, a lot of factors go into the bid for the World Cup. Yeah. So I don't have a problem with Saudi trying to build up their football industry because it's like when China did it back in 2011 or 2012 Mm. no one had an issue when players go to America I guess it was only like Oscar Ramirez Hulk no but at the same time it wasn't really like marquee signers like that no but there were um, what's his name Um, Jackson Jackson Martinez yeah but he banged one no 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 no, but but at Atletico everybody wanted him Sorry, yeah. maybe Porter. Everybody wanted him. Yeah, he was all right though. And then he went a... to China. Yeah. Oscar, balling out of control in Chelsea. He was but but by last season where he was, you know, nah, a he shaky was a, he warrior. Was a bit, he was a bit fluky though. Went to China. Not fluky, but he was a bit inconsistent. Ramirez, solid Premier League player. Yeah. Let's be real, could have still played in the Premier League. Yeah. Probably could have gone to Spain. Yeah. Whatever. Went to China. Hulk. Who everybody at one stage of his career wanted. When he was at Porto, everybody mm. wanted him. When he was at Zenit St. Petersburg, a lot of players wanted him. He went to China. Mm. Um, Mateus Pereira, 22 or 23 year old, mm. balling out of control for West Brom when they first when they came back into the Prem, I think mm. like three or four years ago, went to China. <coughs> so I don't understand why there's such a big fuss. And the thing is, it's because it's because it's Saudi Arabia. That's the only reason why people are making a fuss. Because for some reason, over here, everybody sees as what they do in Saudi Arabia mm. as barbaric or inhumane or whatever. When I'm not gonna lie to you, there's a lot of fuck stuff that's going around the world everywhere. Yeah. When it's America, no one wants to say nothing in America, even though that schools are getting shut up every week or every yeah. day. And we're gonna have a World Cup there. Yeah. But they were saying something about a World Cup in Qatar because yeah. of human rights and whatever. That World Cup in Qatar, I'm not gonna lie to you, looked like the best World Cup I've seen since South Africa. Probably even the best one I've seen. Mm. The matches were wavy. The ev- environment around the um, hospitality and the stadiums and the events that were going on. Mm. Maybe it's because, I don't know, maybe because I follow people that were there. So yeah. I got a bit more of a behind the scenes type of thing. But even just the general vibe around Qatar, bar the media, was wavy. Yeah. But we're going to have one in America, the next World Cup, mm. where people are getting, where people are going into, into schools, shooting places up. I even saw a video the, um, from two days ago where a man walked into the LAPD office, um, mm. not office, but like the police station, yeah, police started beating up an officer, bro. Yeah. Man took his gun and gun back to him, which is yeah. even wild, but, but it's like, bro, like, how can you yeah. get mad at one country because it's like, you don't, agree, maybe okay because they their rules are um, tailored towards their religion. That's yeah. cool. But then one country that's lawless, bro. Yeah. We've, we've done the can just go to Walmart and buy guns and shoot everyone. People that go and buy guns, shoot their whole family and kill themselves. Yeah. But I it, guess it's kind of crazy. With the whole Saudi thing. Because I think when Carragher said it, it made me realise something about the Prem. It was like, a lot of the times when like Bayern Munich and let's say 
I don't know. Let's say a random team. Like, let's say Bayern Munich and Man City go in for a player. Mm. What's really the one thing that stops Bayern Munich from getting that player? It's mostly peas. money. Yeah, it's, yeah just, it's, it's just mostly money. It's mostly like, what well, they're going to be paid for we bonuses, all of that. Mm-hmm. So now that the Prem doesn't have that advantage, I think that's why people are starting to get a bit fussy and about it as well. I don't think it's ruining football. It's just that football's become so lucrative now that, yeah. okay, look, fair enough, 20 years ago, this wouldn't happen. Yeah. 10 years ago, it would happen very rarely. Mm. But now it's like what? Nah, man, I'm all for it, man. I'm not gonna lie to yeah, you. I guess, I guess, a lot of the times people don't really. Um, obviously, I'll be, I'll be. Mm, just, sorry to cut you off, but obviously, yeah. I'd be pissed off if, like, for example, if Arsenal were heavily linked. Yeah, if like Saka, if Saka went, you'd be pissed. I mean, if they're paying the fee. Nah, but you'd be pissed. Though. No, I, I'd be, I'd be. No, the thing is, if you wanted to leave already, like, because a lot of these players are looking to leave their clubs already. Yeah. Do you get it? It's not like we're getting their star player and. Because especially for like even Chelsea as well, like every person that Saudi have bought from us, you guys were looking we wanted, to get rid- We wanted them to go. Like ZH was better to go to PSG, so we sold it to Saudi. Exactly. So it's not like you're taking the stars of these clubs. Bit, you're so. taking players that will go there and become the 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 original legends and the original yeah. ballers to inspire a new nation of Middle Eastern ballers. Yeah. And then tournaments like the World Cup and even their own Asian Cup will become a bit more interesting. Yeah. So I don't. Do you get it? I don't, I don't have a problem with it because for a very long time, for probably like the, maybe since like the start of football being televised around the world till now, players, um, people that grow up in Middle East, yeah. Africa, South Africa, uh, South, Af- South America and Asia all watch the World Cup. Yeah. May, might watch the Euros mm. a bit less than they do watch the World Cup, watch Champions League football. Yeah. Do you get it? And it's like, Wow. I want to go and now play for Arsenal, Chelsea, mm. United, whatever, because I want Barcelona, Madrid. I want to go to these prestigious teams and win stuff. But then when you have, when you've seen that, and now you see a lot of these players that are still ballers playing in your home country. Yeah. And now these teams are getting better, which means that they'll have more money, which means that the youth facilities will get better, <laughs> which means that the facilities in that overall town will yeah, get better, yeah. which will allow players to become footballers and still dream to play for the Real Madrid's and the Barcelona's and you know what I mean yeah. but then still have the chance to play good quality football in their home country yeah. my brother I'm all for it man yeah. I'm all for it yeah it's interesting it's an interesting thing I think yeah I think with the whole Saudi thing as well we need to um, maybe in like fact because obviously the Chinese Super League they don't really yeah that, that project really didn't bang. bang so maybe nah. this this in five years time I think you're talking about like business as usual, like this. A hundred percent. So yeah, we just need to let it run a bit because other than Ruben Neves, that's really been like a side. Brozovic, he's thirty though. Yeah, he's. I mean, he's still quali- uh, Yeah, I get. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, think even Milan as well. They're going not broke, but yeah, bro, I don't know. Wag one for Italian clubs. Yeah, it's just money, really. Bro. Yeah, it's just money, but, but um. Yeah, no, we need to give it time. We need to let them land. But I can't lie to you. When I went, when I went to Dubai in twenty. 20- 18, mm. bro, I was watching a couple of their league games because I was there for a week. I watched two league games. I was like, this football was kind of promising, bro. They had one brother, I can't remember his name, bro. Frizzy hair, like mm. Afro. He was a baller. Mm. I was like, wait, is this... I think I was watching... I was watching Al Itifak and some... versus someone else. I can't remember. Yeah. Bro, this brother was balling. I was like, what? I said, ah, right, cool. Since that moment, I was like, I've had, li- I've had a little eye on the, yeah. on the Saudi leagues, on the Al Hilal and mm. them and there. But now I'm definitely tuning into the Saudi. Bro, Bernardo Silva might even go. No, I don't want him to. I want him to go to PSG. I don't want him to go to PSG because I feel like he'd be a bit wasted over there. But no, nah, Messi's gone. No, nah, but a lot of mid, but I don't know if, with midfielders and PSG, there's something. Obviously, I know you can play right wing, but yeah. a lot of midfielders when they go to PSG. No, nah, I can see him doing that, like Di Maria role because. I feel like he's um yeah, but bro and Mappy might even leave to Madrid. So yeah, that guy that guy's not even that yeah, guy's a tease, bro. He's not going to Madrid. Yeah, I know. He loves playing with them. He's he in, should, he should, but he should, but he's move, he's moving like them things that will that will chat to you in, in the bar, <laughs> allow you to buy them a drink and then go go hop in their man's car at the yeah. end of the night. Like, babe, well going. I thought you were for you leaving me, bro. Like, yeah, it's heartbreaking, bro. Exactly, man. Go get go and extend but, his contract. <laughs> but we need to talk about this um, Arsenal and Tavertz thing. Cause I don't. That, I think that's a very bad timing, you know. You know what? I think that's a very bad. When I first timing. saw it, I was like, "Huh?" Because I'm not gonna lie to you. I've never, I've never really rated Havertz. 
I only rate him because I. Because you know that campaign before he came to Chelsea when he was like... Oh, yeah, cold. I can't remember if it was the Europa League or something. It was Europa? Yeah. He, it was Europa. When I was watching him in the Europa, I was like, this guy is no, different. No, and the thing is, he has talent. Yeah. But where that talent has led him in the last four years or however long he's been at Chelsea, bro? Yeah. I, I mean, he, he scored us a winning Champions League goal. And yeah, and I think what he's... what's it called? We got 65 mil back. That, that, I, think, I think what it is is that... That's better he, than the Torres thing, if, in my opinion. I don't know, Torres did that run against Barcelona. Yeah, Got you but, guys in the final. No, but think about how much money we've made back from Havertz. I can't remember how much we saw Torres. On. I don't think we even saw them all. True, from. but then the winning, the winnings from your first Champions League, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I know. But, Second one, though. True. But Havertz, I think what it is is that he scores important goals. I think. And also, he's, like, he's one of those players where, like I said, he has tech, but mm. I've never really... I don't know. Maybe it's because Chelsea have been playing him as like a nine yeah, or false he's not nine. Hard, man. He's like is, a Deli Ali, really. Yeah, I feel like he's someone who plays behind the. He's almost like a, like a shadow striker. Yeah. In yeah. a sense where he has enough creativity to play in that ten role, but you want him just not necessarily in the box, but mm-hmm. around that semicircle to penalty area, yeah. where if the striker's not getting it, boom, he's the next man. Yeah. Or if you're doing an early cross, he's there for the header because he's got the height for it as well. He's got the physicality for it, but. I don't know. I've, do you know what it is? I think I'm going to trust Mikel on this one because Ramsdale, I was I did not want him at mm. all. I still have doubts about him to this day. Mm. However, he has proved me wrong because he ha- he has he looks like a very good keeper. Yeah. Um. Who else was it? Ben White. Can't lie to you. I didn't do my research on Ben White. Mm-hmm. So I was just like 50 mil. It's a bit steep. But he's turned out to be a very good baller. Mm. Um. Who else? Zinchenko. I was on the fence with him because I was like, I didn't really notice his tech at City, but I'm noticing it at Arsenal. I thought that. That's all I noticed with him. No, I, I, don't, do. even, I don't even view him as the left back. No, the defence... I just viewed him as like, Bro. obviously he shall not be named, did what he did with whoever, and then he left and then Sinchenko... Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because uh, if if Mendy didn't do what he did, then he would still... <gasps> And do you know what is? I'm City, not surprised right? that he's not defensively astute because, bro, he's a midfielder. Yeah. When I first came across him, he was playing in Shakhtar as a midfielder. Yeah. First time I saw him internationally, U- Ukraine. He plays in midfield for Ukraine, bro. Yeah. So I'm not surprised that defensively he's not that guy. But he just, I just didn't know how much of a baller he was yeah. until I started seeing him week in, week out for my club. Do yeah. you get it? So there's certain players I'm just like, hmm, you know? Even Odegaard, because I'm not going to lie to you. <sighs> Odegaard. No, 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 no. Odegaard's been that No, 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 no. <laughs> let me land, let me land. Odegaard, everyone's known Odegaard since his brother was 15 and he signed yeah, for Madrid. Yeah. Do you get it? Obviously, he had his um, loan stint at, I think it was Hereven or whatever in yeah. in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Netherlands. Did very well. Came back to Spain, went to Sociedad, did very well. Yeah, Sociedad, I was like, yeah, this guy's the truth. Exactly. Madrid, first half of the season, hmm. wasn't really doing, getting minutes like that, whatever. We loaned him in. On loan, I'll be very honest with you, he wasn't doing anything on loan. So then I when think we, it was a bit of a tumultuous start, but you can see glimpses. You no, no, you can see, no, the thing is, you can see it glimpses. Was worth, it was worth keeping, though. You, you can see glimpses and you were like, okay, yeah, the guy's a baller. But I was just like, is he the answer to replace Ozil? I don't know, because <coughs> the, the, the thing is, I feel like it's because Ozil was like here and... Odegaard coming into that team was like, hey, he wasn't doing the same creativity. Obviously, mm. it's a new league, all that sort of stuff. He's much younger. So I was just like, I don't know. Mm. So when we were looking to sign him, I was like, he's young and he's a baller, so I don't mind, yeah. but I just need to see more. So yeah. I wasn't fully convinced. And the way he's balling now, yeah. 30 mil is yeah. an absolute steal. But the thing is with this Havertz side, the only reason I say it's bad, not because of how he plays as a player, because even at Chelsea, I feel like a lot of the times it's not really him, it's more so... There's no like continuity. Like when him and Werner were playing, as much as people like to clown Werner, Werner and him were actually decent ish. Like yeah. they could do a job. But, like Werner wasn't a finisher, but he's one of those players where if things aren't going well for him, he knows how to make things like go his well. His runs, him. his runs are ridiculous. Like if he played for Liverpool, people would be saying this. If you played for Liverpool, you, 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 you would have had 20. Because to be honest, the way Darwin Nunes gets treated and the way Werner gets treated, Two separate what, treatment. Because if you think about it, Werner got, I think, 25 goal contributions in all comps in his first season. Mm-hmm. Obviously, that was goals and assists and all competitions. Yeah. Darwin Nunes, I think it's something similar, but for some reason... Werner's seen as a bum. Yeah. Obviously, that, it was bad misses and he was uh, meant to be an out-and-out nine, but... Can I say something? Mm-hmm. That proves my point about Sancho and Pepe. What in terms of what? Sancho... 
did diddly squat in his first season. Didn't yeah. even get in double digits <coughs> all comps. Yeah. Pepe did. He got all, he got double digits even in the Premier alone. Mm. And people are clowning him like he's some sort of bummer. Obviously, I get he was supposed to be the marquee signing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Similar to what, like Werner, he was supposed to be a marquee yeah, signing yeah. for your striker. And he's being treated like he's some sort of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he's some sort of waste man. Yeah. You get but I guess when you guys are coming off like a period of with Sanchez, it's like, this is the next winger marquee signing. Yeah, I hear that. And, and obviously... He did underwhelm. He did, he, oh, 100% he underwhelmed. Yeah. But I'm just saying, it's just, when you actually look at it and the stats, like, oh, he actually did his thing without even scoring pens. <coughs> I think he scored one pen. No, nah, Pepe was all right, but I think my problem with Pepe is that his highlights look amazing. And when I watched him on his good day, yeah, he looks great. Oh my gosh. But when he does nothing, he you does see, nothing. You like. see what game I thought he's finally here. Yeah. Um, it was when in Europa League, we were losing 2-0. No, mm. 2-1. We were losing 2-1. Man came on, bang two free kicks back to back. Yeah, okay, I remember that game. That game was ridiculous. I said, huh? That game was ridiculous. Bro, bro <laughs> I said, yeah. Yeah. This guy might be it. And then he went quiet. And then it was his first game against United mm. where he tore Luke Shaw a new one. Yeah. We need to have a conversation about Luke Shaw when he no, was Luke Shaw's good, man. No, 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 no. I'm no, I'm not even saying he's bad. I'm just saying we need to have a conversation about Luke Shaw when he's What type of conversation? No, we need to have a conversation. Because he gets I feel like people would try to disrespect him, but there aren't really many left backs in our league that are better than him. Because there aren't that many good left backs in world football anyways. Yeah. If we're very honest with ourselves, there's not a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, dep- it just depends. The I full like we're in a transition. The, the fullback pool of in world football has dropped off a lot. Yeah, I feel like we're in a bit of a transition. Huh? We're in a transition phase where a lot of these guys are like wingers now. Or oh, like their centre backs turn. Yeah, but out and out fullbacks, there's not. It's a dying art, bro. Yeah. And Luke Shaw. And Luke Shaw's good. The fact that he can play centre back now, <sighs> it's very good. I'm very impressed. But the Havertz thing, my main problem with it for you guys was. If you guys can't sign Rice or Caicedo, but you spent Caicedo, mil, Caicedo, I don't even, I, I can't ask you, I don't even want to sign No, but him. even if you overpaid for him, at least he's a Xhaka replacement. If you guys don't get a Xhaka replacement, or no, party replacement. but we're, we're getting a Xhaka replacement because we're not letting him go. No, but I'm saying if you don't get one of the ones where it's like your midfield is solid for the next mm-hmm. da, 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 amount of years, then that's bad. Because I don't know, I feel like Alberts maybe could play the eight, but you'd rather get someone who's a bit more defensively sound which I hear first, 100% then putting Havertz there because it's just too much pressure no I agree because you're going to expect him to score goals and also play 8 which yeah no no he I could do that agree. Jacques role where he at the start of the season he was scoring a lot but yeah and I feel like that's that's what it is because I feel like we need a bit more goal output from mm. midfield and you know it's a thing where obviously Odegaard is the main creator in midfield yeah. so if we had someone like Havertz he's not the main creator which yeah. allows it to be a bit unpredictable when opponents are coming up against us. Yeah. Because obviously it's like, okay, if we stop Odegaard, then maybe the balls to Saka and Martinelli out wide mm. will be stopped a bit more, which is yeah. true. But if you have someone like Odegaard and Havertz or Odegaard and someone else who is not as creative, creative as him, yeah. but someone who's creatively sound, yeah. then it's like, okay, so which one do we stop? And it gives us a bit of versatility, especially with Havertz's profile to play in that Jesus role where he's yeah. a striker that is allowed to come deep yeah. and allow Martinelli and Saka to come a bit more narrow and yeah. also players like those false, no, not false strikers, but inside forwards. Yeah. It's, it makes a lot of sense. Tactically, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So that's why, when I started looking at it like that, because I, I watched, um, I think it was a Statman Dave video yeah. and I was like, mm, mm. I, I see I see it. I see the vision. Mm. To be honest with you, I really do see the vision. I'm like, you know what? Fair enough. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I'm just gonna trust it and well, yeah, you guys need to sign like a out and out CDM defensive. Just someone who like who's like a solid midfielder. Mm. Or else it's gonna be very I think what it is is that rough. we're just looking for versatility, if I'm very honest. Or with you. not even it's not gonna be rough. You're gonna be a top four side, but if you actually do wanna compete <clears throat> for the league again, yeah. You can't you can't go in with just adverts or maybe like three promising players, but they're not like no, so apparently the four signings we're trying to get right now are um, Havertz, Rice, Timber, and Lavia. Yeah. If we get those four, that's like a nine out of ten window for me no, personally. Can't get all f- that's like three hundred mil or two fifty. Yeah, but that means Jack has gone, Partey's gone, and one of Balogun or Inkesi has gone as well. No, I'm saying you, you guys aren't gonna spend two fifty this summer. Mm, I don't you could. See that. Oh, almost two fifty, and then like almost 100 mil in terms of outgoings because you still have someone like um, you still have what's his name Nuno Tavares 
How much are you gonna get for heroin? Probably like ten, fifteen. Yeah, I'll, I'll just do it. But it's a, gonna make it's, them. A, it's a thing where, as long as we're making sales, mm. it's fine. And because we've now become in, now we've become a Champions League team, mm. and obviously finishing second in the Prem, you get a lot of money as well. Yeah. So all the money from finishing second, finishing in Champions League for of um for the first time in a very long time, yeah. there's a whole lot of cash influx that's coming in, as yeah. well as our annual profits and all that sort of stuff. Mm. So which means that we're allowed to spend more. Do you get it? So when it's broke, because a lot of people don't realise that qualifying for the Champions League is a mad thing in terms of prize money. Yeah. Finishing in the league, wherever you finish, is a, especially second, Yeah. you get a lot of money. Yeah. Do you get it? On top of your profits and, you know, your balance sheet for the year. Yeah. Because usually it's just your balance sheet for the year that allows you to spend X amount or whatever or not spend as much as mm. you want. But now that you've got money for finishing in the European competition, that's why I'm not even surprised that Newcastle are splashing up 70 on Tenali, bro. Yeah. Obviously, with the new owners and whatnot, but bro, now they've got even more of a reason, no, even more backing from the FFP regulations to spend yeah. more because now they're in Champions League. Mm. So they have a lot of money now. Yeah. Even a team like Brighton, who are, I think, in Europa, yeah. can spend a lot of money as well. And they bought Dahoud, I think. Yeah, he was even a free transfer, bro. I like Dahoud. Very good player. So when you start looking at why teams can spend what they can mm. and why certain teams can't spend as much, yeah. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So that's why I said if Arsenal spend 250 mil this summer, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, but I just I don't know. I don't see I, you guys I wouldn't, that type of club though. To spend I hear it. Yeah. But I feel like over the last three seasons we have become that sort of club to spend a lot of money because no, now I see you guys spend it like on two big players, but I don't like so three or four, that's a that's I mean I'm when like. you look at when we bought Ramsdale, White, Tavares, Lokonga, Tomiyasu, that was almost two hundred mil. Yeah, but I like, think you would say might to go check. You say two of those guys. You just say Tavares, Tavares, Tomiyasu, Ramsdale, White, and Lukonga. Yeah, but you say Ramsdale and White and are two main starters. Yeah, and, and Tomiyasu. Tomiyasu, yeah, you might rotate him, but he mm-hmm. might be your right back. But the other two is like okay, they're just squad players ish, which I hear. But four starters. But but this, but and, and, and do you know what it is. That is because it's a. <laughs> I'm gonna refer to this again, but it's a different stage of the process. Yeah. We're at, we're now at the stage where, okay, we're in the Champions League mm-hmm. and we're gonna stay in the Champions League. Yeah. Doesn't obviously it doesn't mean that right now we're gonna go and try and win the whole thing. If we try and go and win the whole thing, we just go as far as we can go. Yeah. But we're gonna make sure that next year we're here. Yeah. Via league or via Champions League doesn't matter. We're here. We're, I think we got a bit uh, too ahead of ourselves in the process this year in terms yeah. of challenging for the title because I think all all it was for Mikel and the board mm-hmm. was get into the Champions League yeah. uh, via either you winning Europa or by the league. Obviously, we overexceeded in one and under underachieved in another, yeah. but we still met our goal, which is still fine. Which yeah. is why I don't think it's been a terrible season. Not but, terrible, but it's but gonna be. It's, it's, uh, the, the narrative got shifted when we were at the top for a very long time, so. That's what it is. No, it's, but, it's disheartening, but it's not like terrible. Yes, it's a bittersweet ending. That's yeah. all it is. But now we're at the stage where, okay, cool. We're going to become an established club in the top four. We've got in there now <coughs> by finishing second. <coughs> and we proved to ourselves that, you know yeah. what? Maybe we have enough to challenge for the title. Mm-hmm. Now this summer, let's make sure that we can actually sustain that challenge whilst being in the Champions League. Yeah, but you guys just got to be careful though. Because right now I feel like Liverpool... Are better than you guys. I know it's, it might sound like I'm hating, but I feel like with McAllister, if they sign maybe one more midfielder, I think moving Trent, there, it's, it's looking like it's looking dirty. Can actually. I just say I was right? Yeah. I was right about Trent. I don't Trent. think he's that good of a midfielder. I think he's no. I, th- I think what he does in midfield is good, but I don't think he's like. And and do I you know what like it is? Still, he's, it's a whole new position it, for him. No, but do you know what it is? I was saying this that. I think I can't remember. Who, I think it was C four that was saying, yeah. "Oh, just because he played there in academy doesn't mean he can play there in men's." I'm like, bro, like, what you learn in academy mm. stays with you. Yeah. Let's be real here. Yeah. Anyone who's been in the academy or knows like ballers, bro, what they teach you in academy it stays with you for a very long time. There's a lot of ballers that you see progressing to men's football, yeah. and you can tell this guy is just an academy straight out of the tin. Mm. They they tell him what to do, yeah. and then you have those very special ballers that yes, they were in academies but they've got that extra something, that extra flair. Yeah. Do you get it? And Trent is a baller who has it both. Yeah. He's got that extra something about him because I know in academies, he was the guy that in your, in your midfield, you, you, you want him on the ball. Yeah. If you're a winger, you love Trent because you know he's going to find you. You don't even have to look up and make eye contact. 
You just make that a run as soon as you know he's on the ball because you know he's going to find you. Eight out of ten times, he's going to find you. Mm. So when I see players like that, obviously he played right back when he got into the men's team and he's been there ever since, but he has the fundamentals of a midfielder. Mm. Bear in mind, I'm not going to say, obviously I don't know what Liverpool's training is like, I don't know what his training regime is like, but I'm assuming if he, next season he may go into that right um into that right centre mid role. Yeah, in first couple of games might be a bit rocky because it's new for him in the league. Yeah. Do you get it? But over time he will get that familiarity back again yeah. that he was playing that made it that made him one of the stars in the academy. Mm. Bro, like when it comes to ballers, ballers ball. Doesn't matter where you play them. If they know how to play there, they'll play there, bro. Mm. When it comes to ballers, ballers like him. Ballers like I'd even say ballers like Saka, because he's he's someone who is mad versatile. Guys, the winger came into the first team playing left back, and he was actually a good left back. Yeah. And then he played left wing, did all right in left wing. He played two games in centre mid, and he played well in centre mid. Mm. Right wing, he's cooking in his natural position as well. It just makes you a better footballer overall. <coughs> so when I see ballers like that. Even people like James Milner, one of the best... Fo- <laughs> hey, James Milner's underrated, you know? Not really. No, no, no. He's... Okay, not underrated, underappreciated as to how much of a baller he is. Because I feel like people just see James Milner as the boring James Milner, the guy who's like 45 years old, still kicking ball somehow, and he's just got a mad engine. But when you think about all the positions that this guy has played, all the positions I've seen him play in mm. since Man City days, even, even since Aston Villa, I think it was. Um, bro... The guy has uh, he's never looked out of place in a lot of these positions. The guy fielding left back didn't look out of place. Mm. Right back, anywhere in the midfield three. Mm. Either wings when he was at City. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he's even played a game at centre half, bro. Are you good? He's good. But yeah, he's not I don't know. He's still on that like Jordan Henderson table where it's like you're good you're good at football, but you're not like No, because I don't you're not even... on that great. No, because I feel like yeah, Great exactly. Yeah, he's, he's not he's not a mad like legend or like him and Ma- him, Michael Carrick, Jordan Henderson, they're on that. I wouldn't put Jordan Henderson in there. Jordan Henderson is definitely in there. I wouldn't put him in there. Jordan Henderson's definitely Car- in there. Because Carrick was Carrick was actually a baller, bro. Now nah, Henderson's good, man. Henderson I is. I know you have your little thing with him, but no, nah, Henderson's, Henderson's good. It's just that I don't know. Henderson, I wouldn't. A lot if, of I, the time, if I was if I was Klopp, I wouldn't have stuck with him as my main man as as long as I did. As no, as if you're playing someone like Trent, you need someone like Henderson to do a bit of the defensive. No, a um, hundred percent. Right side. But I feel like Klopp could have upgraded on them like three years ago. Yeah, after they won yeah. the after they won the league, wait, mm. they won Champions League and then the league, innit? Or was it league and then champs? What year did they win champs? Uh, no, nah, they won champs first. I think they won champs. First. Oh yeah, because yeah. league was COVID year. Yeah. Yeah. So after that, after that year, I would have already bought a. If I was Klopp, I'd be looking for a Jordan Henderson replacement. <laughs> not someone who's like 26 or 27 and ready to go. No, but Klopp, Klopp's not that guy because Klopp will play someone like Wijnaldum, but you know that at that time they were better players than Wijnaldum. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, I'm saying I would have, and I think this is probably where Curtis Jones comes in because I would have looked for someone who's like his profile, like in the profile of Curtis Jones, young, athletic, he's got a bit of a physique, you know, six foot, mm. bit of, bit, a bit stocky. Well, not stocky, but you know, he's got a bit of meat on his bones and yeah. all that sort of stuff. And he's decent at football. I'd be looking at someone like him to learn from Jordan Henderson and begin to replace him in the next two, three years. So that when it comes to now, mm. he's seasoned. He knows, he's learnt from Jordan Henderson, from the captain. He's mm. played a couple games. He's played cup games. He's played maybe one or two European nights. Mm. He's played against the, the bottom five in the league. He's got minutes in his legs. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, so I, then when it comes to... Curtis Jones could do that. Though. No, but I'm saying I would have been looking at someone like him yeah. three years ago. No, but you you play someone like Curtis Jones next to him though. I don't... I don't think you can. No, but no, but I'm saying, I'm, I'm, but you, yeah, you, 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 you got what I mean in it. So that when it comes to a period like now, where Jordan Henderson, I think he's 32 mm-hmm. or something like that, where okay, Jordan, let's begin to transition now. Yeah. Yeah, you know I mean, we're not gonna play 45 games a year now. We're gonna play you 20, 25, yeah. and we're gonna let my man, who's been learning from you for the last three years, come in and prove himself. If anything, if it goes south, we know we can rely on you because you've been yeah. here for however many years. Do you get it? Mm-hmm. I feel like that's what Klopp should have done. Now, I feel like maybe Klopp wanted to mm. and, you know, the Liverpool board were a bit stingy because apparently that's that's how they are. Apparently they are kind of stingy yeah. with their peas and that. But that's what I would have been looking for. Yeah. Looking I, for these replacements. It would be nice for, if they did sign Declan Rice. They wouldn't, but it would be nice if they did, though. Yeah, I mean, if they if they signed him like last year or two years ago, 
they could have done exactly what I just said. Yeah. That, or looked that, at someone. That would have been a player that would have been like, yeah, he could do that. John Henderson. Or exactly. Or even someone to replace Van Dijk in the long term. Obviously, I think they had that idea with Kanate. Yeah. But even when they bought Kanate, I was like, this guy's very injury prone. Yeah. But, you know, time will tell. Centre backs and centre mids are late bloomers in football, if you know what I mean. Like, most of the ones that really come out of the gates. Yeah, it depends the into role. the first it team. The role, to be fair. No, but usually, it's, usually it's, it's, it's attackers and wingers that come into the first team at 18, 19, and then was like, oh my god, wow. Unless they're like an elite level centre half, centre mid, yeah. rare occasion on the goalkeeper. But centre halves usually start finding their feet at like yeah, twenty three. Like losing that like Bozo mistake gene. Yeah, yeah and yeah, the as they get older, and, like, yeah, yeah, they, they start it's to... those ones. Twenty three, twenty four yeah. is when they start coming into their own. Really yeah, becoming more familiar, get stronger. Yeah, and it, all it takes is the right coaches to understand that, mm -hmm. and the right environment around them to allow them to have their mistakes. And I feel mm -hmm. like that's why someone like Wenger was so good because he allowed a lot of young players to make mistakes. He had because he had a young team. In, in the sense where when he was bringing in people like like Nazri, mm. um, people like how can I who can I who was gonna say even when he was playing Fabregas, bro, mm. at young ages allowed them to make mistakes because when you make mistakes in league games mm. you will learn from it because you're gonna you're gonna play teams of a similar caliber. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And that's why I feel like Chelsea. I've never really liked their their loan policy sending them to Vitesse Arnhem and all that sort. It works out on a rare occasion, mm. but for a lot of players it just feels like bro, am I even wanted by this club? I get you're young, mm. but it's the thing where you need. And I feel like that's why they did so well under Frank Lampard for that first season where you guys finished fourth. Yeah. Because you allowed a lot of your talent to come back and actually flourish in the league and make mistakes and then learn from those mistakes next game or the game after that. I feel like that's why Tammy was so good. That's why Tamori was like, where's this brother come from? Tamori's all right. No, but when Tamori was playing, everyone was like, <laughs> this guy is very good. Even Chalaba, Mason Mount. Bear in mind, Mason Mount was on low in the championship, yeah. so it's a bit, you know, yeah, similar, same same with Tammy. But <laughs> at Derby, he was cooking, man. Yeah, but do you know what I mean? You need to allow young players to make mistakes, mm. we like, and actually not criticize them for mistakes, in the sense where if they make a mistake, you're out for the next four games, five games. You don't come back into yeah, the but team. You know, it's the prem, man. Guys lose their jobs. Yeah, sometimes too quickly. So a club like Chelsea as well. Well, before we round up. Obviously, we're going to get into the playlist, but let's speak about music quickly. Young Thug, um, have you been seeing the discourse online with Young Thug and... I don't know, it feels weird. It feels like Gunner fans are starting to pit Young Thug and Gunner against each other. Yeah. Because obviously, Young Thug has just released his album, um, Business is Business, from mm -hmm. prison. I think he, he teased the album last year. That he was going to release like late last year, but obviously because of the Rico, yeah. he couldn't. But no... He's just, I think he, it just sounds like he's repackaged it and turned it into business as business. Yeah, and there was even a leak online about mm. some sort of conversation. It was, apparently, it was actually like made by AI. <laughs> That's um, what this, I don't know. I don't, this I don't AI know. Thing is rude, I think. Bro, exactly. Because that sounded kind of like Young Thug, like. But it sounded like the snippet from the intro. That's why. Yeah, that's why I was like. Yeah. yeah. Because it was saying, it was basically calling Gun a, a fuck nigga and everything like there that. Was, yeah, it was asking like Little Dirt Block to reply on the song. Yeah. And like, yeah, reply on my album so let him know that we're not messing with him. But I'm just like, I don't think, like, obviously I don't know my man, but I don't think Fug would do that. Like, especially I don't think if, he would. No, I, don't think he, I don't think he rocks with Gala anymore, man. I don't know, you know. I think dropping an album a week later is a bit wild. No, He's trying to kill the buzz for his album. I hear that. Because if Drake drops an album... The next week. Yeah, like, no one's speaking about Gunners one. No, but, but Gunners one slapped, though. No one's gonna be. Gunners one slap though. I'm not saying. I'm not Ain't nothing but that bread and butter. Yeah, but you're gonna. Yeah. Like, I'm saying like in terms of like the hip hop diaspora. Because <laughs> if you think about it, this album, right? This album, he has so many features. A lot of people are promoting it. Thug. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So like, Twenty One Savage, Little Uzi Vert, he's dropping an album this year. Travis Scott's dropping an album this year. Drake's dropping an album this year. So all of them are promoting this album. They're pushing it. Mm. Garner's one is just him, right? Yeah. There are songs I like off that album. But it's like there's no one else to push that buzz. Is that yeah, what you're trying to so get at? I could... And he's not, like, cool with any... Well, all of his, quote-unquote, industry friends have left him, kind of. So it feels like... Even Baby, which is which is wild. Not really. Because, no, but Baby said in interviews before that, like, they're cool, but they're not, like... They didn't grow up... Like, him and... Garner and Thug grew up together, I think, or something yeah. like that. 
but him and ba- him and yeah, no, Baby I know, and Gunner, I know, I know, I know also Baby, like they met through Thug through music, yeah, and yeah, yeah. They did a joint tape together. Yeah, Gunner's and talented and tough thing, so he helped him. Yeah, yeah but I, I thought it was crazy just because I heard a little snippet from I think one of a preview of like Baby's song, yeah. and he was saying something about um niggas taking plea deals and switching on da 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 da. I know Sly wouldn't be happy. Yeah, 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 and I was like, like. Oh no, man! And you see Dirk as well. I like, I, I can't lie, bro. Don't concern my man, bro. Like, what do you mean? It does. I don't concern my man. It doesn't concern him. He rocks with Thug. <laughs> you're not from. You're not from Atlanta. So you. You're not YSL. So I don't He's think cool it, with all of them. It doesn't concern you, my bro. There's a joint tape with Baby, like. Yeah, but I can't lie. It doesn't concern you. Man I just, mean, it's like, he's not saying like fuck God all the time, but no, but he 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 did say that. He said, he said, he said, fuck gun at the same time he said, fuck young boy. No, because he said that because he doesn't like rats. Like, he, his thing is, okay, my, but dad, my dad was put in prison because of a rat. So, like, it's not really fucking, but, like, if you are a rat, then. Boy. No, I hear that. But at the same time, niggas be getting on to you because you ain't slid for young, for King Ron or whatever at the same time. I mean, and apparently, I know what I, and, 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 appa- and apparently, my man knew, my man, he, he got him. What do you mean? As in Dirk knew who who the person is that got young. Obviously, I don't know about this whole Chicago beef, bro. I, I don't Boy, know about King Von. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, everyone knows that little Tim guy. But um, yeah, but all I'm, and I'm saying that obviously my man knew before everyone else knew in terms of us. No, no, you, you know, do you know why? Do you know how you found out? How you find out on Instagram Live? That is wild. Bro, someone like, post so you know when you're reading the things. Someone mm. posted that and then you turn it off and then that's when you found out. But um. I don't yeah, know, they've man. they've caught. I'm not. I'm not even getting into street stuff. But um, yeah, this whole gun on Young Thug thing is interesting because I do think Young Thug's album's better. But I need to listen to it in full because I've only listened to the first five, like I told you before. But the only thing is, the only reason I think it's better is because the features, like for artists like Young Thug and Gunner, not to say like you're a talented artist if you can go a whole album without no features, but those type of artists because they're not really giving me deep subject matter. It's not. It's not a J Cole type of artist. Yeah, no, but like, if I'm list- if I'm just focusing on your lyrics, or if the hook isn't banging, then I'm gonna focus on the verse. Mm. And if you're just like waffling through the verse, or like every two bars you're rapping about something different, it might get a bit boring if it's not a banger like that. So yeah, I hear that. The Young Thug album. Once the Young Thug starts rapping, if I don't like that bit, and then Twenty One Savage comes in, it kind of saves the track a bit. Yeah. So I that's, just I just that's feel that's the like only people... reason I thought that Young Thug's album edges it a. bit. Bit. I think Gunner's project he did well, but he he did well. And do you know this? I just think it's because no one, everyone's in that. On other than the people that are saying fuck Gunner, mm. everyone else is in that sort of. Mm, I don't. I need to wait until I know more before I start messing with Gunner. Yeah. Do you get it? No, but I feel like I feel like he sold eighty six k first week. Which is which like is good. Good for someone who did pretty much no promo. No promo. No, no He's someone who's supposed to be ostracized. No, like produ- like Wheezy didn't produce um any songs on the album. Mm. No major producers. So for him to do eighty six first week is pretty good. But yeah, it's it's um his next one. I don't think it's gonna have as much buzz as this one. No, and also because it was the first tape, uh, it's the first time we've heard from him yeah. since. Like his single was him addressing the thing and then yeah. the tape was like, which, I don't know. I, I liked it, but... I, I liked it, I'm not going to lie I still you. think, yeah, I'm done. Especially because of the run Metro as well, as well. In terms of Heroes and Villains, the Spider-Man soundtrack. This one, this one was another... Like, Metro is one of, We need to have a conversation with these about producers and actually give them a lot of recognition because yeah. producers are mad. <coughs> producers, yeah. yeah. Oi. Yeah, Metro, Metro is like slowly... Obviously, I want to see him finish the Heroes and Villains trilogy. Yeah. But, um... You know what yeah. we should do? We should do like a 10v10. Well, with producers. I'll, I'll pick Kate Boy to be fair. I think Kate Boy smokes a lot, guys. Can I... Can I guys got can niggas I, in Paris, bro. Can, <laughs> That's a long day. Can I choose Khaled? Because, yeah. I mean, he is still a producer. Technically. Well, yeah, I guess so. And Khalid has bangers, bro. No, but he, he's not a producer like Metro. I don't view him as a... No, I, I know, I know I because... I Khalid as like, someone like DJ Drama, where it's more so like... His team. Is that what you mean? No, like, he just says a couple of things at the start of the track. He might be a bit of a tastemaker, but I don't view him as like a Metro. I, the boy. thing is, I, it's because I just, I just don't think he's ago. as hands-on as he was before. That's it. Yeah. But obviously now he's obviously still hands on, but he has his team as well. Yeah. So I feel like that's what it is. But 
at the end of the day, the nigga's still cold. Yeah, but yeah, hip, like, hip the, hip hey, the nigga discovered future, bro. Hmm? The nigga discovered future. Who kind of? Yeah. I'm guessing. <laughs> hey, but hey, we don't even think it's flowers, yeah, yeah. man. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> no, I like Khaled. I like, I'm not one of those Khaled haters, but um, yeah. yeah, this whole young thug thing is very. It's, 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 it's playing out very interesting. Man. Hey, look, I don't give a fuck who gonna snitch on or who he did or didn't snitch on. Music is music at the end of the day. I don't really care. I don't, he didn't snitch on me. Nah, he didn't snitch on my gonna family. Get, it's going to get to a point like he, bro, three years where it's like... He didn't snitch on my family here. Mm. He didn't snitch on my family in Atlanta. I don't give a damn. I'm listening to that regardless. But yeah, he's going to need a hit though. Yeah, he's going to need think, it. I think, he's, I think he's good at like, making like one or two songs where you're like, ooh, this is, this is a very good song. Mm. And it might sit with you for a couple months and then it leaves your rotation. But I don't, I don't think he can do... I don't think he can hit DS4 peaks again Oof. without... Without no, features no, no, no. and without because no, 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 no. when we were um, having um, Oli and Charles on and we speak about him versus Baby, I think one thing Baby can do a bit better is actually like like he did it with Living Wild. I'll give him that, but I don't think he struggles a bit to just rap. Mm. Like little Baby could do, you could just pick a topic and just rap on. The I don't stage know, you know. Like Gunner's a bit more drip. He's a bit more just random. I don't know. But that, but he would pick a topic and rap. Living Wild was was yeah, some but that, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's a real spill. No, but I don't think he could continue. Bread doing and butter that. was real spill as well. So <laughs> it was like for most bars, part, of it, though, for most of it. But I'm saying like, I don't think he can do that for. I don't think people will care enough. That's what I'm saying. I just think it's just that he talks about different stuff than Little Baby. That's it. I feel like Little Baby has a lot more pain to come like to tap into in terms of the raps that he, where he's just like two three minutes. I'm gonna talk about you know some real stuff, mm. but. That's, I think that's only. I think that's it. I feel like Baby has just been through a lot more in terms of the pain and uh, you know times are real hard that sort mm. of shit in comparison to Gunner. Obviously, I don't know my man's lives, yeah, but yeah. obviously from the personas that they portray, mm. that's what it seems like. Yeah, but Baby Baby is very multi 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 talented. No, he is multi faceted. I can't um, lie. I just feel like right now Gunner's ahead by two points. That's it. He can't be. <laughs> I mean, the last album... No, I'm saying like... If Baby's last album wasn't the best, but if you go through the if you, album... If, if, you go to the project, album. if you go, like, Gunner's most recent project and Baby's most recent project, I'm choosing Gunner's. That's not even recency bias. I'm choosing Gunner's. Because nah, I've, I'll still choose Baby. I'm not. Because apart from, like, California Breeze... Shiesty uh, Talk. Um, there's the one with... Nugget, I'm definitely not choosing pop that. Out, pop I'm, out's hard. I'm not choosing the that shit tune. Tune. Young Thug is hard. I'm not choosing that shit tune. Hey... Yeah, obviously not, but... In terms, and Bread and Butter oh, was like the lead single for this tape, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, Compare that to Hey. Okay, lead single for lead single, cool, I'll give you that. But... Well, we can go, we can go through it next time yeah. and actually, you know, do it properly. Because yeah, yeah, actually right now, I'm just talking about what the songs I can remember. Yeah, yeah. But I'm choosing Gunner's tape, my bro. Even that song with Friday is called The Little Baby. Huh? You don't know that song? Um, with Friday? Oh, yeah. The Freshman? Yeah. First of all, did you even see the XL Freshman list, bro? I'm just there to support Central C. So yeah. hundred percent. Shout out my nigga Sench. But I'll be so that I, music. What remember what I said to you a couple couple months ago when I said music at all time low? Do you believe me now? This this this. What was her name? This, uh, Satin Red. I'm sexy red. She's red. She is ass. She's oh my gosh. No, she's not an artist though, like that. She's shit, bro. A lot of that freshman list shit. They're not that's good. Not, I don't think she's They're on not the, good. I don't think Sexy Red's on the freshman list. I hope not. I hope not. Bro, me is at all time low. I saw that snippet of her talking about something about um my my ass brown, my coochie pink. What the fuck is that? Yeah, but her thing is like a bit parody. It's not really. Bro, no, nah, she's being. Oh, nah, man. I I can't lie. American women need to stop rapping, man. Fuck you, no. Know. No, nah, a lot is called. They, they need to stop rapping, nah, man. They, nah, some of them are called. No, no, no. I'm saying, I'm saying the new breed. Stop. They're like, no, nah, they, no, cool no, no. Fuck it. No, no, no. I'm taking the mic, bro. Put a flipping embargo on, bro. Nah, man, stop. They're stop, bad. Stop, Putting it. I'm, bro, I'm stop, saying it out there right now. Okay, they're bad. The little Brooks could. I don't even know who that is. She sounds like an IG Betty. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. I just want to run. Nah, she's called. Glorilla's uh, cold. That, that scene, that scene was there at first. Glorilla's cold. Um, yeah, Glor Glorilla's cold. I like, I like her. I like, you know, the City Girls when they did that song on 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 Kelly's tape. Yeah, that's La when I, La that's, La cold. That's when I tune into them. Lot is cold. Yeah, she's like, I'm, bro. I'm saying the nude reads. Yeah, all the these, all of these, uh, what do you call it? Fiery red, 
um, what's that? There was another one on the freshman's list that was cheeks. I even saw Tory Bricks rapping. Tory Bricks. That was bad. Tory fucking that Bricks. Bad. That was bad. I'll give you that. Oh one. my. That was bad. Oh my. Gosh. That one was bad. I'll give you that one. That one was bad. Bro, I've never wanted to turn off my phone when Tory Bricks is on the screen more than I did when I saw that rap. You didn't. I let it. Play. I just. I was just laughing. That no, no, bad. no. I let it play and I was like, bro. That was bad. She a ten. She had a rap. <laughs> it sounds better, but oh my. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh man. Uh, bro. I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, no, Tory Ritz is bad. Bro. No. Let no. Nah. You know how in our in TikTok comments, yeah, mm. not just for not like for us, but for podcasters in general, yeah. when they're talking about some shit and they're saying increase the price of the mics. Yeah. Bro, increase studio time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What producer is signing off on this? Yeah. I need to know. That Tory Ritz one. They set up to fill. They set up to fill. It's not <sighs> It was bad. Bro, outro, please. Just do the outro. That's not tired. That's not the serious. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe it. Um, yeah, hopefully Sunch, Sunch kills that song. Yeah, that. hopefully, man. He's the best rapper there, so... Oh, definitely. Um, oh, right. That's Lee's good. To be so, fair. for the playlist, I'm going to slap on... I'm going to put Remember by Asha Kerr. I still need to listen to it. Though, I? <laughs> that tape is br- it's good, man. It's good. I'm not going to say it's brazy or it's the wildest thing, but it's good. Like, so it's, a, it's a solid tape. It's not better than the first one, obviously, but um, it's good. It's very good. Mm-hmm. I'm going to slap that one on there. Okay. Um, also, I'm... actually, wait, let me add this other song as well. I think I might have already added it on there, but this is a tune for the summer. Shout out Addy Josh, you just dropped a song with Charlie Mace. It's called Consent. Yeah, you put that on there. Did I put that on there? Yeah. All right, so um, no. Let me get... I don't think I put it on the Spotify one. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't. Let me get... Let me get French Toast by West Side Gun. That song is hard. All right, so no more. Yeah, you did the outro today, man. But yeah, you've been locked in to the Outro Podcast. Thank you to everyone who's tuned in today. If you stay to the end of the episode, we appreciate you. But there's still one more thing you need to do. One more thing. What is it? You need to leave a review, leave a like, subscribe. Whatever platform you're on, if you see anything positive, do it. You so if that's a review, <laughs> if that's a like, if you can't do any of those things, at least share. That's the at least we're asking for. Yeah, 100%. But it's been your boy J to the Izzo. So mid MB. And we out of here. We out of here. Thank you.